Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah. Sunday's here, and the weather gods have shined upon us here in western New York, and I am going to get a ride outside today. Um, it's supposed to uh, warm up a little bit more in the early afternoon, so I'm going to do some editing, uh, get some of my uh, laundry done, check these guys out. So at any rate, I'm going to leave the house in a couple hours. It's going to get up to about 50 degrees at that point. That way I don't have to layer up quite as much when I leave and worry about being uh, overly warm during the course of my ride. So let's get started. Good morning, baby. Good morning. All right, time to grab my bike clothes and get the hell out of here. significant headwind coming my way so I'm gonna take the headwind on the way out because it's zone two ride so I'll get some free speed on the way back home but um, I'm sure most of you who follow cycling news or cycling channels online have heard about uh, the incident the Indy pack uh, wheel race with uh, the cyclist Mike who passed away a couple days ago and uh, I think it's one of those stories that resonates with cyclists everywhere And I'll admit myself that when I read the news and saw some uh, videos about poor Mike, I was very saddened by it. And I don't want to detract from the people who actually knew him or loved him because they feel something so far beyond what I can comprehend that, you know, I can't compare my feelings. But I think most cyclists, that's their greatest fear. Going out on your bike, doing something you love, doing something for fitness, and then being taken out and not even knowing the difference. And I think the bottom line is no matter what we do to try to protect ourselves, whether it's reflective lights, clothing, electronic devices, there's still gonna be that propensity to be injured or killed on your bike. That's not to say you should go out and be afraid every time or not ride your bike because you're afraid. Because at the end of the day, you're probably just as, if not more likely, to get in a car accident on your way to work than get hit on your bike. That being said, admittedly, I think about that stuff a lot this time of year, even before uh, Mike passed away. I caught myself thinking about the safety element. If you live in a climate like mine, you realize that there's a certain period of the year where it's just an untenable environment to ride in. So as the weather starts to break, the drivers are still not mentally adjusted to people on the road other than cars. In the summertime, they're used to kids and yards and the potential for them to kind of jet out in front of you. I'm sure I'm not alone as a cyclist in terms of having my share of close calls vehicles that don't give me more than six inches of space on my left as they pass, vehicles that don't observe the right of way when they're turning or coming out of an intersection even though you have the right of way. I've even been clipped by a truck. I was well into the shoulder and my only, my only thinking was that the guy was dicking around with his cell phone or his radio and just wasn't paying attention. And the asshole didn't even bother to stop. My point is, despite all the tools and technology and things available to try to insulate and protect ourselves on the road, at the end of the day, we can't control everything. We can't wrap ourselves in a force field. All we can do is practice cycling in the safest and most conscientious manner possible. And the only thing I could say is that we need to start spreading the word, spreading awareness, not just between cyclists, but between other people who share the road with us. 
I don't really want to incite the conversation about, you know, drivers are assholes and they don't respect any cyclists because that's just a broad generalization that isn't true. Most of us who ride bikes also drive cars and we're not assholes. <sighs> not even half an hour in, I hit a piece of glass. Fix a flat time. I get my tire change and the valve stem explodes. So my roommate is coming now with emergency supplies and a track pump so I can get back up and running. Nothing like going flat halfway up the hill. Then realizing you unplug your rear derailleur cable and ended up way up at 38 RPM. But back to my original topic of conversation. I think a lot of this boils down to infrastructure. You know, the roads that we ride on years and years ago may not have been as heavily trafficked as they are now. As the population grows and the cars on the road begin to multiply, there's less and less room for people on alternative modes of transportation. Essentially, one of two things is going to have to happen. The infrastructure is expanded to include things like bikes and pedestrians and runners more substantially but we need to learn to share the road. Let's say we even reach that utopian society where all vehicle operators, cyclists, runners, and what have you, live in perfect harmony. We still can't control everything. There's weather, there's animals, there's freaking nature shit, there's mechanical stuff. So, you can't expect that nothing's ever going to happen. But one thing that I ended up buying last year, and if you've ever seen like a bicycling magazine or even checked on any of the cycling websites, you've probably seen it, is the road ID. This isn't a plug, and it may seem a little gimmicky, but it's like a, uh, a medic alert bracelet for cyclists. So let's say something happens. Let's say I lose consciousness. Let's say I endo over my front wheel because my brakes just disintegrate. I'm passed out on the side of the road. Yeah, I have my license in my pocket, but that doesn't help anything. So I have a, a bracelet on my wrist that has all my emergency contacts on there, as well as the fact that I have no known allergies, so that if anybody needs to administer medication, they can do so without fear. I bought it last year on a pretty good sale. It was a good deal. I mean, I've got like a premium van with uh, you know black on black. There's really cheap ones. I think you can get them as cheap as like five or ten bucks for Christ's sake. It's a worthwhile investment. It might actually save your life. You know, I was never really that dogmatic about it, but when I heard about Mike, I started wearing it again. Because first and foremost, if I do knock on wood, I don't. But if I do get killed on my bike, I don't want some kind of news source to be the first people to release the news of my death. I want my family to know first. And if I am hurt, I want my family to be at the hospital waiting for me, not figuring out about it two days later when I regain consciousness. So it's, worth why, it's a worthwhile purchase. I'll see if I can dig up the link. I'm pretty sure it's roadid.com. But I'll link it down below if you guys are interested. See you guys coming from different areas around the world. Please weigh in, let me know what you think about this subject. Um, you know, I, I've heard that the trend is especially high in Australia where Mike was killed. And uh, it's just unbelievably sad. My uh, thoughts, prayers, and respects go out to uh, those people who were uh, friends and family and loved ones of Mike. And to those of you out there who may have lost a person in your own life to the sport that we love. They may not have uh, received the notoriety or the news coverage, but they're equally as important. And they're... Uh, their absence, I'm sure, is sorely missed. In light of all this, I hope you guys will take care of yourselves, take care of each other. If you have the ability or the reach to be an ambassador for cyclists in your area, do so. Because I'd like to see, eventually, hopefully in the not too distant future, the adversarial relationship between cyclists and drivers basically disappear. All right, 45 miles in, 
got just about what I wanted to get in for three hours. I actually wanted to get a little over 50 miles done, but I changed my route plans because I screwed up and uh, lost about 20 minutes to my flat tire. Um, waiting for my roommate to show up with some extra emergency supplies. It was better off that way because at least I knew that if I was 20 miles away from home I had extra tubes and tires, uh, tubes and cartridges rather, um, because I had exhausted what I had on hand. But if I haven't mentioned before, my roommate is also my best friend and quite frankly she's more like a sister than a friend to me. Um, you know, she just is very generous um, as a person and I would do pretty much anything for her. In fact, I don't think there's anything that I wouldn't do for her. And uh, I, I believe, in fact, I know the same thing is true in reverse. Uh, the fact that she was willing to, while she's been sick, she's had a really bad cold and she's having a down weekend, kind of like my last two weekends. She was willing to jump in her car, uh, bring me new tubes, cartridges, and a track pump to, so that I could continue on my route and continue my route uh, ride so I didn't have to double back, get some more supplies, and replan and kind of screw up what I had going on for a ride. So it may seem like a simple thing, but she does stuff like this all the time and I try to do the same for her wherever I can. Um, so, you know, if you guys have people like that in your life, whether they're friends or family, cherish that because there's so many fair weather friends and family members out there that it's kind of rare to have somebody that's just willing to stick out, stick their neck out for you and be that generous with their time and, and just resources and whatever it is that they do. So if you have a person like that in your life, don't take them for granted. And make sure you tell them that you appreciate them. dinner consumed. Uh, I'm going to get my ass in the shower and I'm actually going to end the vlog here and get my ass to bed. I'd like to get up early to get a longer morning ride in tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be overcast but it's going to be close to 60 degrees so it'll be even nicer than today. The wind's a little bit cold today but at any rate thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.